Hey, welcome to Brightworks. What are you looking at? A 1977 930 with a 1986 engine. So we've been driving this one around, putting some break-in miles on it. So it is now time to do the 100-mile uh, service, and then we're going to turn it over to the owner. Let him live with it for a 1,000 miles, see what he thinks. So far, so good. Cams are looking good. So we will uh, get the valves adjusted, check our torques on our uh, ARP head studs, and go from there. But, uh, yeah, we'll keep you apprised as we, uh, as we get this going. All right, so we've gotten all the stuff off the top of the motor, and we were able to set the valves, tops and bottoms, or intakes and exhaust. Um, number four intake was a little tight. Everything else was just perfect. And we've also checked our head stud torques up here on the top. So that requires three hands. So when we do the ones on the bottom, I'll, uh, I'll take you guys down there with me. So the last thing we have left to do, other than putting everything back together, is we're gonna check the torque values on our head studs. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six on the lower side. So we'll check the two inners first, then the next ones out, and then we'll check the outside ones. Now, so far, the reason that I'm going to do it that way is on the top, all 12 were perfectly fine. So if I had a loose one on the top, then what I would do is I would follow the torque sequence that um, the same torque sequence you follow when you're when you're initially building the motor. But I don't uh, I don't expect to find anything here. So let me uh, get you guys set up and we will uh, check torque on those real quick. None of this stuff is rocket science. Uh, one little thing that I do uh, that is you know, standard practice. I, I didn't invent it, I learned it from somebody. But these head studs, which that's a spark plug, eh, can't really see very well. But those head studs, these are the ARP head studs, right? So ARP says 38 foot pounds on the aluminum cases. Don't go anywhere near that on mag cases. But 38 foot pounds on the aluminum cases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna check them at 35 foot pounds. All right, so that's within plus ten plus minus ten percent, but what it also it won't um, it won't move anything that doesn't need to be moved, because if they're loose at thirty five, um, they'll certainly uh, they'll certainly show that to us. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so all the head studs were uh, were perfect. You can see them down in there and just kind of looking around, checking camshafts, checking everything, rockers. Our uh, uh, rocker clearances were good. I think I said earlier in the video, I think only two required an actual adjustment, maybe three, um, but definitely no, uh, no real issues there. Hey, when you've got these uh, twin plugged things, you'll notice that um, I have numbered the plugs or the wires, right? So that's number four. So I know where to put them back. These had, I had those uh, little number uh, loops on them. Those don't work on 911s. I learned that on this car. Uh, next time I'll, well, not next time. <laughs> the last set of uh, wires that I ordered from um, uh, directly uh, from the guys who make this for Cluet, I had them put wire numbers on the, uh, on the actual uh, heat shrink here, and that works out really, really well. So if I had it all to do over again, I would make sure to get that that handled. That would make life easier. But looks like we've got no issues on our oil tank. Everything back here on the front of the motor, if you will, look good. Little baby turbocharger looks good. Uh, yeah, transmission looks good. Maybe one day put a new clutch cable in it, but don't need that today, that's for sure. And axle bolts were all still tight and torqued. So yeah, for the 100 mile checkup, pretty happy with, with how this, uh, this little lady turned out. All right, once we fire her up, we'll finish the video off with that. 
told you guys if I found anything cool, I would show it to you. Well, check this out. So the fitting that normally goes in here on this particular intake manifold, it was just crimped off. And, um, you know, this is the one where I was kind of trying to figure out, you know, what, where's the boost going? And now I think it's just going into the engine. I think turbocharger is just a, a hair too small for what we've got here. But um, one of the things that I did on our latest turbo build was I tapped this hole and I actually put a, a plug in there. But on this one, can't really tap that hole. I You can see by the shiny parts, I started to play around with that and I was using a little grease and I was like, no, nah, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna get that all done without uh, without putting some magnesium shavings down in there. Now you'll notice that there's a stepped finish, right? So there's actually a spot on the inside that is smaller. The OD is smaller than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, um, a good old fashioned freeze plug as opposed to tapping this guy. If we ever have to take this intake manifold off again for some reason, we'll tap it. Um, but we probably won't have to, uh, but we're gonna use a good old fashioned freeze plug that we've expanded just a little bit. So 916 freeze plug, we've expanded it a tiny bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of JB Weld around the edges of it. And that'll hold it in there. We've had JB Weld run it on uh, up to one bar boost for years, decades on uh, certain cars with mods that we did to uh, the factory blow off valve. So we got this guy just the right size right now. We're gonna go mix up a little batch of JB Weld, tap him in, let him set overnight. All right, you can see there, we've got our freeze plug in and uh, I used a little bit of JB Weld all the way around the edges of it to make sure that it seals and it doesn't pop out. So to 15 PSI, no problem. To 100 PSI, probably still no problem. Put a thousand PSI on it, now we're talking business, but you know what, there's a whole lot of other stuff that's gonna break long before that little guy does. So, um, yeah, definitely didn't think that was going to be an issue. But like I said, as soon as I just rotated that guy, he just moved. So we know Porsche glue, which is essentially JB Weld, does need to be replaced every 30,000 miles or uh, 35 years. In this case, 45, almost 50 years. All right, we're gonna get the intercooler back on, fire up and see how it goes. All right, there we have it. So we did a little adjustment to the timing, which made her a little bit more cold blooded, but I think once she's warmed up, she'll appreciate the changes we made. And uh, yeah, so put a couple miles on her and we are going to send this pretty lady home. But. Uh, I'm sure she'll be back. We'll have something going on. Got good oil pressure. Yeah, she's a blast to drive. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along on this journey with Chili. And uh, yeah, check us out at brightworks.com. If you like these kind of videos, hit subscribe. Have a fantastic day.